Tuned into Breaking the Mask of Depression with your host, Diva with Depression. Hey guys, welcome to Breaking the Mask of Depression with me, Diva with Depression. It's good to see you guys today, even though I can't see you, but um, I'm so grateful that you decided to tune in. I'm going to get right into it today because if you watch part one of my ADHD series, you know that myself and my special guests got really, really candid, but time got away from us. So we didn't get to finish everything. So I decided to have her and another special guest on tonight. We're going to do like a round table discussion. So welcome my oldest baby, Tony. Hi. And one of my oldest baby cousins, oh, Carmen. Hello. <laughs> and you guys heard Carmen last night and you've heard Tony in at least three episodes. So we are going to start. This is going to be candid, guys. So say what you got to say. Do what you got to do. No holes bar because it's such a it's such a unknown thing in our community. So we want to make sure that by the time we end tonight, people have an idea of what we're, what it, uh, ADHD is and some of the symptoms, coping mechanisms. We're gonna give you all some advice and we're just gonna go with it. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder affects approximately 8 million adults as if women needed more shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a pile to our plate. And mental health disorders are very common in adults with ADHD. So y'all know that I got to scroll the shit that, you know, like we should just <laughs> <laughs> roll it down. So okay. we're not even going to get in it. I'm the poster child for every crazy ass mental disorder crossover that there is. So my first thing that I want to discuss, ladies, is your most debilitating symptom. Who wants to go first? I don't want to go first. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> Y'all are ridiculous. Now, listen, <laughs> when we're off camera, remember at the wedding a co- about a couple of months ago, we chatted. Uh, we talked about everything. Now y'all ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> My most debilitating symptom, and this is, a, this is ADHD, PCOS, menopause, everything, depression, everything across board is my lack of focus, my brain fog, my, you know, not being able to do anything you know, because I don't have the mental capacity to do it anymore. So I think, you know, I can't read a book. Um, reading a magazine is, is hard. Um, so writing, you know, writing a, a story or a blog is hard now because my brain is just disgusting. And that is, I, and, and I tell the psychiatrist this every single time I meet with her, that there has to be some way for me to get my focus back. So that's my first that's my first debilitating symptom. Tony. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say time management. Is is that your? <laughs> That's not mine, but baby. <laughs> I mean, I, I was I was late for the, the podcast, so it's just like it was Me just seven thirty. Now it's seven fifty eight. I don't got my wig on or nothing. <laughs> and so I think time management is my biggest thing. Procrastination. Um, I think like procrastination, time management, time blindness, and then like that, that paralysis, like it's so much to do that you don't do anything at all. That all like fits in one yeah, little thing. That that time affects, thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, so I think that's my biggest one. Uh, guys, we were talking, and, and me and Carmen might have mentioned it last week that my baby brother got married um, in February, right? Mm-hmm. And we were all in the same house. I mean, the fucking wedding was actually <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> upstairs. We were still late, y'all. <laughs> and I was making the cake. We were late to go upstairs. And we didn't even have to walk up the stairs. There was an he elevator. had an elevator. And still late. <laughs> Wait, it just made no sense. My family needs a group late read, everybody. If y'all want to send me some money so we can get a group session going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, baby bird. 
I'm going to say mine is the disorganization. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, it is like the bane of my existence. <laughs> I, I, I got a system, but I, I got a new system, but I don't have a system. Mm-hmm. Where is it at? I put, I literally put my checks in a safe space, as my daughter calls them. And it just took me like three days to find the safe the space. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I hide things. I'm going to put it right. <laughs> yes. So when the I safe space. It, yeah. And then, okay, now where's the safe space? <laughs> now um, yeah. I think I told you guys this, that I couldn't find my keys for like a week. And I looked everywhere. I was in my room. I was in the office. I was in the kitchen. I even thought I put it in the refrigerator. I mean, I looked. And then one day I was getting ready to go out and I went to pull something up out of the, re- the recliner. I had been sitting on these keys for a week and a half. I had the number to call UPS to get a new mailbox key. <laughs> I was, it it was me. actually yeah. under me. and. Um, that's when I said it. Something's got to be done. Something's I leave mine in the door. Like when I, yeah. I open the door and we'll come in the house. Closed. I've done that. I've done that and slept the whole night. I've yeah, done that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So what do you see? What, I know that we all said that what our, sim, what our worst sy- symptom is, number one, but does it affect your, how does it affect your out, outside life? Like your uh-huh. work and your relationships. And, and this is a sidebar. So you don't have to share as much as, you know, just tell me how it affects you outside your house. You said Carmen. we're talking about an hour? Because it's going to be. <laughs> All right. You said Carmen and Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, it affects every area of my life. Like, um, I'm going to do my taxes. I'm going to do them early this year. I'm doing them on tax day. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and I'm trying to collect everything at one time. And I have one paper that's upstairs and one in my, why do I have a file cabinet? I don't know why I have a file cabinet I and like stacks right here. and bags of mail. Y'all look, I don't know. Like I'm just lost in a pile of shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly the, the word. That's exactly it. And you, we have to be organized exactly for work. It. We have to be organized for school. You know, we have to be organized for our kids. If you're sandwiched in the sandwich generation, you got to be organized for your parents. Yeah. I got grandkids I got to be organized yeah. for. And I'm just like, y'all, listen, I don't got it. <laughs> yeah. And everybody thinks you do. Like, right. I think they're starting to see that I don't. Because <laughs> you can only hold it for so long. Like, it's just too right. like, I feel like You, you can, you can only fake so long. Um, yeah. Tony, what about you? Well, I think it affects everything. I think I don't think I knew how bad of an employee I was. Mm. I actually started looking into this and how I don't know, like jumping from job to job. I I don't I get restless. I get bored. I get sick of seeing mm-hmm. the same people. But then I really was. I really am not the best employee. I'm never on time. Um, it gets done, but mm, maybe not. Like, it's like a deadline. It's going to get done the hour before it's supposed exactly. to be done. Um, and in my, I noticed, like, my um, results, they aren't consistent. So one week, it's like, I'm on it. Next week, it's like, oh, okay. So I'm not that, I'm not that best of an employee. I'm trying, but I don't think I realized it until, like, you couldn't tell me that I shouldn't have been employee of the month every place that I went. But I'm, <laughs> I'm really not, the, not the best employee. But how, I mean, I know you said that you didn't have any advice, but how, wonderful it is that you were candid enough to tell us that because how many people are really going to say that like I right I mean same employee. for me yeah. same for that's I mean I think that's what I love about nursing that's what I love about floor nursing mm-hmm. was that the fact that there are periods where there's so much going on that our brain like thrives in that space mm-hmm. right like there's 50 things to focus on and this is my superpower but when you have this time things I'm sorry like um when you have tasks where you everything is not going on and you have to focus on one thing and it doesn't give you the payoff that you need to mm-hmm. encourage you to do it, you can't. Right. right. So I want to ask you, Tony, um, because you, was your diagnosis when you were under 18 or over 18? Over 18. So just, I think maybe a year and a half, I got like the official diagnosis. Okay. So we don't have it because I'm wondering if like, our kids right because I got a di- when I got diagnosed with hyperactivity disorder I was uh, we didn't have a lot going on you know mm-hmm. for kids with um ADHD and such right. but um I wonder if we're giving them transferable skills 
to be able to transition either into the workplace period or um, complementary workplaces for their skill set. Because I, I think it's a superpower still. I um I and this is something that um if everybody that knows me knows that everything that I have seems to to have transferred to my babies. And that's something that I know that it's, you know, I, there's nothing that I can do. Like these this mm-hmm. illness is, is it. But mom guilt, you know, like yeah. I, I yeah. passed all of this on. And I remember, you know, Tony did when we fit when we start, and I think the three of us started at the same time, me, you and Lauren started looking into it after Tony was diagnosed. And then when Lauren got into high school and, you know, that's when we realized like all three of us, you know, have these symptoms. And I'm like, why did I give my children this you know, <laughs> illness or whatever? And, but then, like you said, once you started researching it, like I think back to like when, when my baby brother was younger and I'm like, that's it, that's it. You know, he had it. And then, you know, other people, you think about tendencies and it's like, okay. But like you said, we didn't have those diagnoses. We didn't have the information then, you know, do, do you, Carmen, do you think, do you see that your kids or your grandkids yes. have traits? Okay. <laughs> yes. Even if I don't see, I don't think I see the hyperactive. Well, right. In my kids, I don't see the hyperactivity. Um, there are definitely one of my children does have executive function issues. Okay. Um, and so, but not the ADHD. Okay. Um, because they were they were tested, you know, so they do they so they have the um executive function disorders. But um two of my grandkids, right, can't don't sit still. Um, like remember when I brought my granddaughter there, we yeah. were bringing her up and you were like, Oh my god. <laughs> like literally she'll lay in the bed with me with the lights off and just move and move and move for hours until she finally goes to sleep. Yeah. And um, my baby grandson, I'm like, oh, he is on the move and he can't even walk. And it's just like it's 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 the sped up on the move. Like, okay, I see what this is. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to keep the red dyes away from you. (laughs) And you got to take everything away from the sugar to everything. But you know what? Now that we know, you know, because I remember one of my grandmothers and I'm going to move on. But I forgot which grandmother would say that to my mother, like stop giving him candy stop giving him juice stop giving him whatever but that didn't mean shit you know what I'm saying because this mm-hmm. is embedded in us you know yeah. but it um, helps it does, it does. Help. no I'm not saying that it doesn't yeah. but they thought that that was it you know right like, okay we're gonna like, be the, still be the cookie mm-hmm. lady with the mail <laughs> no uh the, Lauren was supposed to be with us tonight but she just shared her debilitating symptoms and what was it Tony Social anxiety. It, she said it contributes to her social anxiety. Yeah. And then um, time timelineness. Again, she's late for everything. So that's that social it. anxiety. Is it like, because for me, it's like I'm never like on task. I'm always like rushing to be on task or I'm ahead of task or like I'm never, I, I just never feel grounded. Right. And I mean, not, not say never. I, I don't often feel grounded so then I'm always anxious about Mm -hmm. what did I forget what didn't I do what do I need to do like it's a never-ending circle yeah except for maybe when we're asleep because that's but then you're dreaming oh yeah 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 so I guess it it never stops oh yeah right what's that it does yeah like like talk about insomnia you know I think it's like two different things if you sleep too much or you don't sleep at all like there's yeah. no in between. You're not getting eight hours. Either you're right. getting two or you're getting twelve. Like it's not. Yeah. Now I will say I know you, we were supposed to talk about coping mechanisms. When I do my yoga at night, I know like that's further down. I just but right here with this piece where we're talking about sleeping because I'll forget. Um, and my yoga instructor a lot of times works me hard, like mm. kicks my ass. Um, I go. I, I'm out. I noticed that the other night we worked out and I was like, I don't know if you should do it this late because, you know, they say like, it's supposed to give you like endorphins mm-hmm. that you're going right. to be, I had the best sleep. Like, and we worked out from like eight to nine and mm-hmm. I, I slept well. So maybe it's just the opposite. Yeah. But I, was like, it's, I don't I, know. I, I, listen, we'll be here all night. Yeah. It's too hard to figure out right now. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> like I said, it's a never ending circle. So what is, your coping mechanism 
for the time management part. And it could be that you don't, you know, you don't have any, or you have half of one, <laughs> either one. Yeah. I, I don't have, I don't, I'm still like very trial and error. So a million planners. I wish I could show y'all the stack of planners. The stack of long <laughs> clock. I know because I bought some of them. <laughs> right. So now I have like I just bought this um sunrise <laughs> alarm clock and it's supposed to like mimic daylight. So it's supposed to like gradually get lighter. You're supposed to wake up to the sound of birds. I mean, like it's really supposed to get you going. I snooze it every single time. I get the birds <laughs> get right back in the bed. So I've tried alarm clocks. I've tried like you know, like the reminders on your phone, but I just ignore them. So I don't really know. I, I really, I don't, I am just literally just winging it. I don't, I don't have, I, I know writing things down works better for me than putting stuff like, you know, people put things in their phone. Yeah. yeah. Writing Same. is better for me, but that's all I got for you. I don't know. I, Carmen, what about you? Um, Time management. I don't, I don't have one. Yeah. Um, but I, I wrote down um, to give give myself grace and not excuses, mm-hmm. right? So like, there's a fine line that I find because I can manipulate myself into thinking the excuses are like grace, but like, okay, this is where we're at. This is who we are. Your brain isn't going to change, right? Be kind to yourself, but what can you do, right? Right? Like, mm-hmm. I can't. What I can do is have one notebook instead of 15 notebooks, yeah. right? What I can do is find a planner that almost meets my needs instead of three or four or five and six planners, Yeah, right? You know, so I, I just, I feel like, you know, we have to like not make excuses, but give ourselves grace and then take action in that, wherever that space is, that sweet spot we find. Right. I like that. Yes. I yeah. like that. Um, I, I started, but not started. Um, I just ordered two weeks ago, 20, post-it notes mm-hmm. 20 20 I, I think it was 20 or 25 because I have to write everything down and when I tell you that it's down to make jelly um make sure you call this place make sure it, it's down to everything and then I had a stack of note uh, post-its and then I have to staple them into my book hmm. because I'll still forget stuff so um yeah but I that's know. it will work huh does it work it, it works when, like, if, say, I, I have some a thought or a, a task, I'll write it down on the, the post-it note, and then when I get a chance, I'll staple it into the book, so I'll know I'm going to forget. Whatever the fuck I just wrote down, I'm going to forget it. To give it. <laughs> but I know that this book is where I write my show notes, so I will definitely look at this book, and then I can go back to my post-it notes and see what's there. That's not a coping mechanism. That is just some bullshit that I put together. But but it is a coping mechanism yeah. because it, you it can is, have yeah. comfort in knowing that it's in, if it's for the show, it's nine times out of 10 in that book. So you can right. like release some of that anxious, that nervous energy because you know, okay, it's in the book. And I have four others. I'm, I'm like Tony. And that's another thing that I passed on. Like we love to go, we go in the store, we see the, oh, this will be cute for a little mm-hmm. journal. Yes. This will be cute for this. <laughs> and we have 52 journals, 85 calendars. I have a box under my table. Um, and what, like, I have three yeah, notebooks. The other day I said, I was very adamant that I need a planner that you write in and then it automatically uploads to your phone. Like, I am, like, hell-bent that I need a calendar like that. Yeah. Well, what about, Maybe, a, but, what about a digital planner? And with know. the paper screen on, like on your iPad, with the paper screen. See, okay, so and the then thing, you can use your pen. Well, see, the issue with that is, am I going <laughs> to remember to charge the iPad? You well, know what yeah, I mean? Because my phone is, is always dead. My phone is always dead. Um, yeah, yeah. The laptop is charged just enough for this this thing, and then I don't know if it's gonna. So I don't okay, know. That, I, 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 we gotta go like this. We gotta go. <laughs> <through yeah, right? laughs> um, uh, okay, oh. number two, number two most debilitating system. We'll go with Carmen this time. Losing things. Oh, wow. Mm. I lost my, I, I came upstairs to get ready for the show. I said, I'm going to change my sheets. 
I took my iPad off the bed. I changed my sheets and I could not find my iPad. And my room is messy, but there's not like, it's not like eviction mess. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like hoarded or anything. And so I was like, I'm going to have to use my phone, but my phone screen is going to be too small. And I'm going to have to, it was, I found it. Was it under the sheet that you just changed? No, it was on the floor (laughs) in front of my TV stand. So I wouldn't step on it when I changed the sheet. (laughs) Because whenever I change the sheets, I'll get I'll change everything and lay down and watch TV. I'm like, well, where the hell is the remote? <laughs> right. Under, under the, the sheet. Under the, yeah. <laughs> under the fitted sheet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what about yours? I was gonna say um emotional regulation okay. is huge. Uh, um, I think, tell, tell us what that is. I mean Okay, I'm new. No, your 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 example. I just think you? that it's just that it's like the ability to regulate your your emotions. I think that um, a lot of times there's like overstimulation or understimulation, mm-hmm. and both of those things come with its own set of emotions. And when you don't know where to direct that to, I mean, it, it can it, you lose it you lose your shit honestly. Mm-hmm. You don't know why. Um, and so I think being able to identify it and like direct your energy where it needs to be directed to is helpful. So that, but that is still hard for me, I think. Yeah. That's th- huge though, but at least, you know. Yeah. 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 It took a while. It took a while. I have to tell the people listening that you should see us. If you could see us, we're all nodding our heads. Every time yeah. one says oh, something, yeah. we're bouncing our hair like bobbleheads. Um, yeah. The emotional part is, is it's terrifying to me and yeah. you know I can't always pinpoint that it's ADHD it could be the depression it could be PTSD it could be these things bad things or whatever um but but I think that for me one of the second thing that's so hard for me is what Carmen said giving yourself grace mm-hmm. I feel like a loser when I can mm-hmm. accomplish something yeah and since every day I don't accomplish. There are some days that I don't accomplish shit just getting up out of bed, which is good, but mm-hmm. I don't. And that so that means that the cycle of feeling like a loser continues another day, continues another hour, and I don't know if I can express it enough how much that it hurts me, it, it bothers me, and it's it's turned into what came first, the chicken or the egg? Is mm-hmm. depression affecting the ADHD or yeah. vice versa? Yes. And then let's add some more to the circle. But even after we get halfway around the circle, now I'm in a space where maybe I don't want to be here anymore because I can't get it accomplished. Maybe mm-hmm. I won't do this because I'm such a loser. And why bother? You know, and your self esteem, like, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't even, I haven't seen self self esteem since um, 1986 or something like that, you know? <laughs> but it it is a, it, bu- it bugs me out how much everything ties together, you know, and giving yourself grace is amazing. You know, that's an amazing piece of advice, but we all don't, you know, we don't give ourselves grace. We don't even ask to speak to Miss Grace. You know what I'm saying? Because but it's a practice. So, it, it is. It that is. We don't, that we don't practice, that we haven't right. seen practice. And I think that, you know, the women in most women in most women's lives have not been, um, have not outwardly done that. So they haven't like exemplified it. So we would know how to do it correctly. Right. Right. Because like, I don't think we're born good moms. You learn how to be a good mom. You learn how to say to your kid, I love you. Right. right? Mm-hmm. You're pretty. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're smart. Like it's, you know, like it, it, I don't know that that always comes natural, but you train yourself to do it. And so, especially coming from a long line of air quotes, perfect women, right um we have to like remind ourselves that those women weren't perfect you know we're not they weren't we're not even meant happy to be perfect. right hello they all have a crown <laughs> um but like I think I think like that is dipping into like that loser mentality because I mean I suffer from it too mm-hmm. um and imposter syndrome and all of that but I think that is um that I think that would have been their ADHD or not yeah yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then, oh, sorry, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Tom. 
Mom, please go. go oh. <laughs> I was going to say, and then if you don't have the encouragement, you know, if you don't have the support, and I know like Tony or Lauren can call me when they're in the midst of a breakout and I can say all the right words and I can talk to them and, and maybe just having a conversation will calm them down. And then I'll, we'll finish, we'll get off and I'll be like, well, if you can do that for them, why can't you do that for yourself? You know what I'm saying? Like, because we don't deem ourselves worthy. Like, we exactly. don't, we have exactly. to parent the child inside of us and it's not natural. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we have hard. to learn to do it. Right. Yeah. It's very hard. And yeah, because yeah. you don't, like, your kid doesn't know that you don't believe that their picture is beautiful. Right. But you right. know that you don't believe that you're beautiful when you look in the right. mirror or that you're smart right. or that you can yeah. do this. Like, you know, you're right. like, girl. <laughs> yeah. So I think we have to like just continue to say it over and over and over and over again until we believe it. Yeah. Right. What What would you guys say is 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 your coping mechanism or don't have a coping mechan coping mechanism for your second one? Tom. Um. The emotional, I guess. Yeah. What's helped me? I mean, honestly, is um seen a psychiatrist so I have a psychiatrist every, I see every four weeks and getting on the right I don't know medication cocktail mm -hmm. which I think medication is like a topic within itself yeah. but um my psychiatrist kind of has that same like logic mm -hmm. where like you don't know what it is is it the ADHD causing it? like you don't know so she just let's just treat all of it mm -hmm. um, so I think that's helped being on like antidepressants and things like that um I, that's really all I got because there are days when I'm still I don't really know what what to do right like you get stuck you don't really know right. what to do how to react so I the only thing I can think of is medication I think psychiatry but having someone to talk to that understands I think helps a lot right. too what do you think Carmen about yours um I just put random coping skills, so I'm going to ignore mine, but having people in your life, like finding those people that get it, yeah. finding those people that like most of my friends know I'm going to ramble. I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to hit six corners and that's fine. You know, if it's really important, I have my one cousin who's like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. And that's exactly how she says it. Let's break it down. Right. It down. Right. And so, um, I just think like finding your people because I think once you find your people, that's your therapist, that's your prescriber, your doctor, your friend, your spouse, they'll give you like this safe space to find what you need. Right. Right. I haven't found it yet, but I'm getting there. You will. <laughs> and, and I think that what both of you shared is so important for black and brown people to understand. Tony, you said medication. You both said therapy. I, I, the psychiatrist every six weeks, I'm in therapy every week, medication every day. I think I'm on four right now, um, but there's nothing to be ashamed of because mm -hmm. like Tony said, it helps. And if it can help you, you know, do complete a task, you know, to make it through a day, then, then let's do it. Um, one of the, I'm going to do, Tony, you gave me the idea to do an episode about the medical shortage, um, the, the medicine shortage, of, oh, yeah. you know, the ADHD, mostly the ADHD medications. And um, I've been reading stories, researching and reading stories, and people are really losing their shit because there's no regular, there's nothing regulating their thoughts and their habits. And it's really, really taking people for a loop that they cannot get their medication. You know, so never, ever, anybody listening to this, never, ever be ashamed to go to the doctor and to take your medication because some days that's the only thing that's going to get you through. And it doesn't um, have to be forever, too. No. So right, right. Just get you through a certain period of time. Right. And then, right. you know, maybe you'll master a system while you're yeah. on this medication that you're able to maintain when you're not. But, you yeah. know, it's, it's an option. But I do understand yeah. people who explore that I understand the oh, yeah. invitation yeah. yes That's and I sometimes try to rewind and think that like yes we live in the United States of America and we live in a modern society right 
But if I were like, my brain might just be how it's supposed to work, right? Like right. if we were living off the fat of the land and I needed to look for a lion, you know, or watch kids, you know, and, and I don't have a, a fenced in yard while I'm making bread, you know what I mean? Or I'm picking you know, uh, you know, like my crops, like yeah. is my brain might work how it's supposed to work. You know, that doesn't like, maybe it is difficult for me to sit down and read a nonfiction book from cover to cover. But if like, like if my grandma were to take me in the kitchen and show me something, I mm-hmm. could learn it. I right. couldn't, Donna, you could. <laughs> <laughs> I was outside riding a bike, but, <laughs> but you know, like if, if, if we were like, had that experiential learning, right. it would, might be a, a, well, it would be a lot different. So I just try to give myself like my brain works. How it's supposed to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's I gotten this that's... far. So right. like, obviously, yeah, I, I agree. And that's something to think about, you know, um, me talking about being a loser but how, how about if that's how God made me, you know, like you said, maybe that's just who I am. A and, loser? Um, not a loser, but oh, maybe okay, my, the way I function, like Carmen said, oh, the way okay. I function, the way I think is what I, w- I came here with it. Right. Right. Like you get know? up at five, take a shower, go to the gym, come back, get dressed, get kids up, work, go. You know what I mean? Like who is, the, are we supposed to work? Who can function like that? We're not supposed to. You know, and I think it um, start it causes more damage over time because you exactly. try so hard to fit into like it if it doesn't work for us, it doesn't work for us. I right. am not somebody that's gonna get up at 5 a.m. I don't <laughs> I'm not a morning person. And that's okay. Like right. you know, tailor to your we just we try to run from it and mask it, and then it gets to a point it's like exhausting yeah. to where it's actually yeah. damaging to to fake it than to just mm-hmm. like tackle it and be yourself and acknowledge it. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, that's one of the reasons why I schedule everything after two or three. Um, oh. and, and ideally it'll be four. And, and I actually have an assignment coming up and all the, the meetings that have been <clears throat> so far have been six to eight. They, they started six and I'm like, what a, what a blessing because I can't function until like four or five, like I'm a vampire. You know, if you get me at 11 o'clock, <clears throat> I'm bouncing around, I'm vacuuming, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Um, but th- the next thing was to give advice, but that was that's part of my advice. Like try to bend to what you got, work with what you got. You know, um, I, I don't work during the day. So this I, I can't say anything about you guys, like you have to go to work. So even if you're not a morning person, you still got to drag yourself all the way to work, you know, whereas I'm here in the house and I don't have, I can sort of tailor my hours and tailor my time. So you just have to, you know, work with what you got and, and, and hold on, you know, um, Carmen, what would, what would be your advice for someone that is going through this, these things that we're talking about? Um, I think, like I said, just get help, find a psychiatrist, find a therapist. My therapist is like the most organized black auntie. Mm -hmm. I never get up close to her, but I'm sure she smells good. Right. (laughs) (laughs) She looks all put together, even though she swears she's not hundred percent put together, but, um, get help, take action because it's like the, the pile of mail is only going to get bigger. The bills are only going to get more far, be- you know, further behind. You're going to forget the kid at school. Right. It Like it just, it gets worse when you don't find a way to manage it. And your way is going to be different from my way. Right. What do you think, Tom? I agree. I'd say that's my biggest advice is to get help. Um, I mean, like tailoring things to fit us, I think that comes after you're able to like identify and then take mm-hmm. the steps to actually get tested or speak to someone. I think that's like later on. So I think my initial advice is to get, to get help. Um, I know for me, I didn't really think anything of ADHD. I started listening to a podcast, uh, women in ADHD, and she started mm-hmm. talking and interviewing these people. And I said, this sounds familiar because mm-hmm. none of the, um 
so I had been on antidepressants and things and nothing was really working Mm -hmm. like it's supposed to so I started listening to that podcast I must have listened to it every day for months to before I finally went on and like took the little self-diagnosis test Mm -hmm. and then got diagnosed like got help to go get diagnosed so I think just maybe researching and getting help I think is like that that's my biggest advice um is to take that step first I, I think that I would leave people with um, this is not a children's disease, you know, like, and, and yes. I'm not, not di- disease, but disorder. Um, I, I know that I was of the mindset that, you know, it was only in children, ADD, which is really ADHD only existed in children and it doesn't. Um, so, you know, if you're going through any of the symptoms that we talked about or what you read, then you definitely have to get help because it might not, I know me, it was like, okay, well, I'm going through menopause. And when you have menopause, you forget things. Your brain is sucks mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So that's what it is. Um, then I passed the 50 mark and it's like, all right, well, you're over 50, blah, 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 blah. You know, but when I was younger, it was like, well, you have two kids and, and it's easy to forget or whatever. But I think that you have to learn to uh, recognize what's going on with you. And um, if you're like me, write it down. And then when you go to the doctor, share those things. I think I don't think people talk about these things with their primary care as much as they should. Mm-hmm. Um, primary care doctors, I say this every single week, they can be a godsend. You know, my primary care worker uh, doctor was the first one that diagnosed me with having a breakdown at the time that I had my breakdown. Um, so go write down what how you're feeling. Um, you, you see, Tony said that she listens to a podcast. Thank God for podcasts. You know, yeah, because yeah. Podcasts and TikTok are saving lives. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, write down how you're feeling um, and take it to your primary care. Now we all, today we all have portals, you know, so write it down and send your doctor a note and say, this is how I'm feeling. You know, what do you think? Um, and it could be menopause, you know, it could be, Um, I I hate to say this, but like after 50 or 60 and not even anymore, but it could be beginning dementia, you know, it could be the beginning of something um, intense and you don't have to, you shouldn't be waiting too long Mm -hmm. to get help because um, you just never know where it's going to end up. And um, medication, medication um, and holistic, you know, Carmen, I know that you're more holistic than we are. (laughs) I should be medicated. <laughs> Let's just, I'm okay. gonna, I should be medicated. Okay. I will be perfectly <laughs> honest. Um, and four times a year, I say I'm going to get medicated. And then I don't. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. But, you know, but this, what we're doing right now, I think is like, um, this is important. Like talking to other people like, oh, Tony said I could do this. This works for her. Maybe it'll work for me. Yeah. I think particularly having this discussion, I mean, all, all women, but I think amongst uh, Black women, I think mm-hmm. is extremely important because I do, I often feel that being a Black woman should be its own, it's like, it's literally its own category. Yeah. yeah. ADHD, exactly. discussion being a Black woman, because exactly. we are not, it's conditioning. So we already are not conditioned we're we're expected to handle everything we're expected Mm -hmm. to be perfect we can't show weakness we can't so that's our that's just it's just conditioning and then on top of that these inherited disorders that were like it's just it's very hard so I think having this discussion I think amongst black women is important too so I think that's most definitely definitely that's why last week we mentioned um the super women woman syndrome because that's how we were raised you know, like, yeah, we saw our grandparents that like they did it all. I remember <laughs> the first time that I saw my grandmother cry. And part, part listen, I'm going to say 60 to 80 percent of that was my grandfather. That's why she was crying. But I, I look at what she did from five o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. You know, she got to get up and eat breakfast before he gets up. You know, when we're there, it's like, OK, we got to get the kids ready. You know, and then I got to wash breakfast uh, dishes. Then I got to set out whatever I'm going to cook for dinner. 
then here comes this man asking for lunch, <laughs> you know, so I got to do that. Right. And, and we were, like you said, conditioned to this is what we're supposed to do, mm-hmm. you know, and I think I, I always want to add this, that I think that the pandemic sucked, but it showed us a different way, you know, to freed us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it showed mm-hmm. us that this is important. Commuting for four mm-hmm. hours. That's some bullshit. You right. know, <laughs> you, I don't need to do that to feel accomplished, you know? Um, so in and, and podcasts and audio books and uh, what, what we say last week, Carmen, white noise machines, mm-hmm. you know, these are all things that people don't think about. And I want you, everyone that's listening to us to find something that helps. The other day I was having a serious panic attack and I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, write this, this letter. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. You know what I did? I put all that shit away and I colored. I colored yes. Yeah. I didn't have to, I didn't have to think. I just did some coloring. And at first I was like, you're such a fucking toddler. But, but then I was like, you know, it worked, you know, because after I finished coloring, then I was able to go back and do a little bit more. So I want you guys to, um, to end this out. I want you to list your favorite book, not your favorite book, but a book that you know <laughs> offhand, a book or any a article or anything offhand, a website that someone can go to to get help or at least get the, get the symptoms besides coming on my show and going on my website. But, <laughs> but um, what do you think, Carmen? Because Carmen, you're in that field, sort of, kind of, sort of. No, and I'm the one with the, with the face. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, you always just shell shock. But one one little thing. Maybe the American Academy of Pediatrics, even if you're okay. an adult, mm-hmm. you know, go on a PEDS website um, and look it up because, again, they're little people with the same disease process that you have. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tony, you did mention the, the podcast. So if you want to say that again. Um, so it's the Women in ADHD podcast on... Um, it's on Spotify and um, Apple and it's Katie Weber. Okay. And that's okay. the one that I was listening to. I really like that podcast. And then um, it's, it's like, it's a website, ADD2. It's like, okay. it's, it's, I think it's supposed to spell attitude, but then it's like okay. ADD2. And they have a lot of like um, interesting articles and um, the self-diagnosis test that I took on there was helpful. So those are my two. Okay, so what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is, Tony, you give me the information and I'll make sure that it's in the show notes and it's on Instagram, whatever. And I will actually tag that podcast um, to let them know that uh, they're helping us out. I'm, I have an uh, off-color suggestion. Um, I'm hey, Carmen has something to say, man. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, I'm oh, raising no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Mel Robbins. You see me, I'm like getting ready to get juice. I can even see you raise your hand. Mel Robbins, um, mm-hmm. middle-aged white woman. And I know a lot of times it's black women don't want to, you know, go mm-hmm. over in that sandbox. But even if you just go on her Instagram <clears throat> and her daily, like she puts up these quick little videos that are so freeing. Um and it's all around mental health and getting your shit together or not being able to get it together and all of that. Yeah, she she's actually helped me in my older age. Okay, okay. Well, I, re- I wrote that down. So you you send me that information. Okay, and I'll post it. Mine, and lastly, but but last but not least, mine is off color. When I was hospitalized with whatever number three hundred breakdown in two thousand eighteen. I had just bought, no, no, it might not have been 18. It might have been the next breakdown. Anyway, um, I had just bought Jennifer Lewis, the mother of Hollywood. Mm. I had just bought her book. And I absolutely love her because I'm like, this half is crazy as a bed bug on crack. But I love it, you know, because you watch her, you watch her talk and she's this way and that way or whatever. And um, initially it's like, she has such a vibrant personality. Her book, it, she is very, very candid about her walk with bipolar depression. But how she got there is like Jesus Christ. It's like, it's like all of us, you know, like, oh my God, I don't know why I'm hyperactive. Oh my God, I don't know why I'm hypersexual. Oh my God, why am I bouncing around? That helped me 
I don't have bipolar disorder, but it helped me to um, share more of my story mm -hmm. and to find people that are going to share more of their story because she was brave enough to put it out there, hmm. you know? And um, so that's my off color. Uh, and I say off color because she curses more than me and I didn't think it was possible. Um, <laughs> and her story is just amazing. Did you guys read that book? I no. did. I started it. I just didn't finish it. Yeah. Well, but forget it on tape. <clears throat> and she has another one out. And I'm going to leave with this. The second thing is, is that I know that social media sucks, but, and there are aspects of it that I can't stand. Every day I'm getting ready to, to, you know, delete all of my accounts because some of the bullshit that you see. But if you go on Twitter, there are so many mental health advocates and resources mm -hmm. there. Um, if you go on Instagram, there's so many of us on Instagram. And, you know, as much as I had to pull teeth because my kids love TikTok, um, I finally did that. <laughs> but there's so many people on TikTok. And it's not just you know, advocates and doctors, it's people that are living the same as you. You know, I get so many notes about, girl, I, I give you so much credit. You shared this, you shared that, because that's us, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if you ever want to feel like you're not alone, then you go to one of these places, use social media for good and, and use it to get you healthy. And you don't even have to be fully healthy. Just if it helps you to get to the next step, the next minute, that next hour, um, then that's worth it. Uh, Tony is a TikTok junkie. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it saves she does. Yeah, but she does. She's mm -hmm. like, oh, let me tell you what the TikTok girlie said. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you learn a lot. You learn yeah. a lot and you, and you, you don't, do. some of the stuff people share on there is kind of like, okay, I wouldn't put that on the internet, but there are like, somebody said it. Thank God somebody said it. Cause I, mm -hmm. I, I would have been scared to say it. And then you go in the comments and people are sharing like, well, this worked for me and that worked. Right. So right. I, and yeah. you're not like, I'm not so different. Right. Because, right. Right. you know, the, the, the power that these diseases have is that they make you believe that it's only you, that mm -hmm. nobody would understand what it's like to, oh, shit, I got to go to work today and I don't have clean clothes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But there are people out there who know and who yeah. understand and can give you tips. Yes. Yeah. Or and just make you feel comfortable. Exactly. Right. And, and just say, OK, well, it's OK, you know, um, I, I, and I want to I want to try to leave with this. Um, Tony is my oldest daughter. Carmen is one of my baby cousins, um, and they save my life some days. You know, um, Carmen especially is always calling, and she's like, "Are you?" And she's the only one that says, "Are you okay to talk?" You know, "Are you okay to listen to what I have to say?" And Tony, after work, and, and you know what, my girls have been like this since they were little. Picking them up from school was a it was just hilarious because they're like the golden girls and they had these stories in it. Guess what <laughs> so-and-so did today? Right. And you know, they have to do such and such or whatever. And both of my girls, I'm not just saying this because they're my babies, but both of my girls are so open to listen and open offer something. You know, if I say, oh, if I do have my loser day, you know, I can be sure that Tony is going to go, you're not a loser mom. You know, you did A, B, C, and D. And Lauren will say, ma, don't say that. You know, um, and so there are people in your family, um, we all have some bullshit in our family, but look around you, you know, the, the people in your family, once you start sharing what you're going through, you would be amazed at what trickles out, you know, and, and gets to you. And, um, and, and that's only if you, maybe you don't have friends or maybe you don't have a therapist yet, reach out to a family member, say, can you help me find a therapist? Um, but just be open to getting one person, at least one person. I say this all the time, at least one person. Like Carmen said, like we all say, you are not alone. I told you 8 million people, adults are living with ADHD. So you, you ain't by yourself. So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna list in, the, in my show notes and on the blog and everywhere else, the website that Tony gave us. And I'm gonna list, mm -hmm. Carmen, you said Mel Robbins. Mm -hmm. send me that information. Um, I am not ashamed to, to post other podcasts and all that stuff because we all, we, we have to help each other. So um, I'm going to late guys, you, I will have everything on my website and you can go there and check it out. <clears throat> I want to thank um, my babies for coming on tonight because 
Um, they were so candid. They're so candid. You guys did amazing. And I love the, that's part of my package platform is that I always want to be real. And you guys are amazing at sharing what is really going on. So thank you guys for coming on and thank sharing you. your story. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and you'll be back. You'll be back. We're going to do some more. Um, I do actually, I think um, next week is my topic is going to be imposter syndrome. That's on my list um, because that's big, you know, mm. so <clears throat> guys look forward to imposter syndrome. We're still in the middle of mental health awareness month. Actually, today is mental health action day. And so we did good. We did some Yay, action, we took today. action. We did some action <laughs> today. Yay. So thank you everybody for your support. Thank you for listening. If you don't already do it, go follow me everywhere. Just look Diva with Depression and follow me because I love to, to talk to people. I love the, the feedback and, and I just love that so many people are um, listening and learning and getting to share, starting to share what they're going through. And that helps someone else. You just never know. Uh, Illumination Media and Technology, he keeps me going. Y'all go follow him. Keep yourselves safe free from stress, which I know is very hard because the world is a shit show. But please try to find some peace, even if it's in a piece of candy, <laughs> you know? Or carbs. Or yes. carbs, right. Um, I can't have carbs right now. Oh. So I, I have to stick to watermelon. But, <laughs> you know, whatever. Well, close your eyes and imagine it's a croissant or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just found, you see how it starts? I didn't Could found, you, uh, you know how many times you said I'm going to end with this? And I know. Right? <laughs> I just saw an article for gluten-free, no carb croissants. There's no way. I, I don't want it. Yeah, I want it. I want it. <laughs> Give us the croissant. <laughs> you see what we go through is that this is what ADHD does. You start chattering and the, the, the mouse just goes off. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go listen, follow. If you have a, a topic that you want to hear about, let me know. If you have some feedback, let me know. Say goodbye to Carmen. Say goodbye to Tony. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Stay well. Remember to find your peace. And you all are superheroes for being here today. Bye. Bye.